Yeah, I caved. Like every other streamer out there, I got myself a Shure SM7B and a Go XLR. But I want to explain myself here and kind of document why I ended up going with the Go XLR and talk about the Go XLR Mini, talk about some of the alternatives, and really as a non-streamer, how I ended up with this setup right here. So let's get into it. For a long while now, I have had my sight set on getting one of these Shure SM7Bs. And, you know, this mic needs really no introduction. It's known for its sound signature, its build quality, and just general robustness being around for so long. However, it is also known for being a notoriously hard mic to drive. And if you're watching this video, you probably already know all about it. It needs six, at least 60 dBs of preamp gain to be able to function properly. In my experience, I'm a pretty soft-spoken guy, so I need a few decibels more than that, 62, 63 decibels for it to proper, properly work for me. The problem is there's a lot of interfaces that aren't able to deliver this kind of decibel gain um, from the preamp. And that's kind of where I want to start because you know, like I said, I'm set on getting an Shure SM7B, so I need a interface that has an XLR connector because, you know, this microphone is an XLR mic. So I experimented with the Creative AE9 the sound card that has an audio control module that has a input uh, with an XLR. I actually made a video about this, and I'll link it somewhere for you guys to tr take a look if you want to check out more, but... Long story short, that audio control module uh, XLR input really was no good. It was really hissy and could not be paired well with the SM7B. That means I need a dedicated input device to be able to drive this microphone. And I looked at everything from the Focusrite Scarlett to the Behringer to a lot of different alternatives. And I always ended up coming back to the Go XLR. And uh, you know, putting aside the input gain uh, for a moment here, the other requirements that I had was I wanted to be able to monitor uh, my microphone using headphones and actually specifically IEMs, but uh, that's, you know, headphones, headphone jack, something to be able to get real-time monitoring without latency. And I also wanted to be able to power speakers. These are studio monitors, actively powered studio monitors, um, and I wanted to be able to swap between headphones and uh, speakers because for the most part I game using speakers. Uh, if I have to go to headphones and, and whatever, I will, but my preferred method is to have just you know, speakers coming at me. It's, it's a lot less uh, cumbersome to be able to play that way. Taking all these requirements and, 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 and looking at all of the different inputs, uh, the Focusrite Scarlett and the Behringer, those didn't, those were dedicated inputs that were really meant for instruments and didn't have the preamp gain. Uh, that would require you to get a cloud lifter or a, a inline fat head to be able to boost the signal using the 48 volts of phantom power to be able to boost it so that the uh, input devices are able to um, give you that clean gain. I didn't want to go that route, right? The device would have been a couple hundred dollars and then a cloud lifter was another 150 or so dollars. So that's like three, $400. Uh, it would have worked, but it, it was just more things in the chain and, and just wasn't what I was looking for. Then you also had alternatives such as the Audion Evo 4, as well as the Elago Wave XLR. Both are good devices that generally work pretty well with this um, this SM7B. Actually, the Audient uh, Evo 4 needs a booster as well, but the Elago Wave XLR doesn't and seem to be able to drive the microphone just fine. However, the interface just wasn't there. You know, you're spending several hundred dollars, but when you take a look at the interface between the Go XLR Mini um, and, and, and something like the Elago Wave XLR, uh, you got the faders of the XLR Mini, and just, I guess I kind of gravitated towards the Go XLR version of, of the input device. Long story short here, that's kind of how I ended up 
choosing, at least mentally, to go with a Go XLR. Um, and it really came down to either a Go XLR Mini versus the full-size Go XLR. The Go XLR software is a little bit on the basic side, but it does everything that it needs to do. You do have decent EQ capabilities. You have gates, you have, um, you have compression. Uh, you can set all of that stuff. So on the basics, this all has. Uh, it's not very fancy and it doesn't you know, have a very nice interface and whatnot, but it gets the job done. And so that's kind of why, like I said, I gravitated towards the Go XLR. Taking a look at the mini versus the full-size Go XLR, I actually bought both. Initially, I was set on just getting the mini because the mini has the four faders, but it doesn't have the sampling, it doesn't have the voice modulation stuff. And I'm not a streamer, right? I'm a content creator. I wanna have good audio inputs when I do voiceovers. And I do game, but again, I'm not a streamer. So I do want my microphone to work with Discord to and, and other audio recording, whatever. So uh, that's kind of where I'm coming from. The extra voice modulation stuff wasn't that important to me. So that's why I was initially looking at the mini. The mini also has a pro where the two headphone jacks, the headphone jack and the microphone jack is coming out the front. Uh, it's very nicely and accessible. I really do prefer it being on the front rather than on the back. The audio processing of the mini is exactly the same as the full size Go XLR. Uh, the preamps and, and everything inside is exactly the same. So it sounds exactly the same. The capabilities are identical. But you can see here, I went with the full size Go XLR. And it all comes down to the motorized faders. The Mini has a way of dealing with uh, the motorized sliders, uh, especially when you hit the mute button, it will mute it, but when you change the volume and hit unmute again, you actually have to move that slider back to the original position where you had originally muted it before you can move it again, change the volume again. And that little bit uh, was just, was a little bit extra, extra thing to think about and I really like the way that the motorized sliders work because the way I've configured it is I've got the four sliders, right? And again, I'm not a streamer, so I don't really care about having system sounds or game sounds or music sounds and being able to change those levels to be able to output a good stream. What I have configured them to do, which in the software you have a lot of configurability and a lot of, you know, you could change what everything, every little thing does here digitally on the software. So I've got a mic level, I've got a system level, and then I've got headphone and line out level. Headphone being for the headphones, and then the line out being for the speakers. What this all means is I can change the fader levels here and change, basically change the speakers, but also, hit mute and, ch and and swap between headphones and speakers or have headphones in speakers going at the same time, being zero latency or almost, almost no latency difference here. I can swap between headphones and speakers on the fly. And, and that's really nice. And also having the routing table to be able to choose what audio sources or applications get routed to which audio you know, output headphones or speakers. And then uh, the other thing is the live monitoring of the microphone going through uh, to the, the device. So for example, the speakers, I have it currently configured so that it will not uh, play back audio from the microphone because you know, you get feedback loop if you do that, right? But I do have it being played back on the headphones. And if I wanted to cut that out, for example, you know, if a vacuum cleaner was going on and I'm gaming with my headphones and the microphone uh, was picking that up, I could just hit mute and then it just cuts that all out. It's really easy to use and it's, you can see that there's a lot of value in the faders and being able to configure the faders even if you're not a streamer. And that's where, that's where I discovered the uses of the Go XLR, and initially I didn't think that it was that useful, but after playing around with it some more and more, 
I really do love this thing because it is so configurable, so easy to use, and the motorized sliders are just awesome. As a little tangent here, talking about the uh, GoXLR's audio output quality, using them with the SE, Shure SE A46s, IEMs, you can hear a little bit of quality difference between using it with a good audio amp. Um, it does sound a little bit more muddy than uh, coming out of a, a good source. However, uh, for my uses for gaming, for most of the things, uh, I don't really mind that quality difference. It is a really small amount of difference. And if you have normal headphones, normal gaming headphones, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. It's only when you get into really high end audio equipment, really good headphones, you'll start noticing that. And uh, the other point is that the audio, the headphones, um, can't, I can't drive very high uh, impedance headphones. Uh, so just be, you know, keep that in mind. If you have very high impedance headphones, you will notice the audio to be lower uh, if you were to use the headphone jack on that. The last thing I wanna to touch upon is the Go XLR stand that I've got that I picked up. This is a first party accessory. Uh, this is the Go XLR stand for the full size Go XLR. And you can buy this for about 50, 50 or so dollars uh, if you want. There are cheaper, option, cheaper options out there, but uh, if you want, again, the first party version, uh, this is the one to get. Now this build is made out of st stamped steel uh, or stamped or I don't know. It's, it's metal, it's steel. Um, and it's actually pretty heavy. This is probably three or four pounds worth of metal. You've got a rubberized uh, base here for your Go XLR to sit on, and there are, is a lip for it to, to sit. So you can actually set the angle from pretty shallow to pretty vertical, and that's where the lip will come in. You can, it, it, this, is, this is practically vertical um, if you have your Go XLR sitting on here. However, the problem that, the reason why I'm not using this, I wouldn't call it a problem, but certainly for me, the reason why I'm not using this is uh, if you notice here, the Go XLR stand is actually about an inch, um, inch tall at the lowest point. And if you put your Go XLR on here, even with the most shallow setting, it's actually pretty tall off the desk. And uh, because the unit itself is a couple inches, and then you know you, you add that up there. Uh, where I'm going with this is it won't actually fit underneath my monitor. Um, I, even if I would have to lift the monitor by an inch or so for it to be able to slide underneath had to have it at the correct angle. I would have preferred this if this was a little closer to the uh, table and you know getting giving you that few extra degrees without lifting everything. Um, I very much prefer my monitor to be at you know, the current height rather than higher. So uh, long story short, I'm basically not using this stand, but it's a really nice stand. And if you have a, you know, a little bit different setup, maybe your table's a little lower, maybe your monitor's a little higher, it works great. Um, and you can see in, in some of the pictures of, of setups, this thing really makes the whole Go XLR look even more professional. The Go XLR does not have any power switches, but if you were to pick up the, the official stand, you do get a little dongle that has a power switch on it. So you can actually turn it off and turn it back on by using that physical switch. Um, you know, that's the only way to get access to it. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you have any questions about my setup or if you wanna bounce any ideas off of me, go ahead and comment down below and you know, I read every comment. Uh, I might not reply to everyone, but I certainly do read every comment and uh, you know, I'll try to help you out down there. And if you like this video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more tech videos talking about hardware equipment, computer stuff, make sure to subscribe. I got a lot of things coming in the pipeline, so keep an eye out for that stuff. As always, my name is Stan and I'll see you guys in the next one.